Hey everybody, Pinchiao here, and on today's episode of Pinchiao's Garage, we're going to be working on Pappy the Bus. We're going to show you guys how to do a valve adjustment on these cars, because uh, they need them every so often. So let's get to work, because this is Pinchiao's Garage. So before you get started, make sure you take off your distributor cap, get yourself a big old crescent wrench, find out where uh, cylinder number one is. So on your spark plug wire, on my engine, since uh, when they built it, they kind of mess up on the timing on here. So mine's actually about, it's clocked one uh, cylinder over. So cylinder one is actually pointing right at me. Uh, t traditionally, cylinder number one is actually right over here. It's uh, one uh, cylinder to the right. So if you see your distributor cap on, traditionally this will be cylinder number one and this one will be two. Uh, so again, eh, right now this is number one. <laughs> so get your, um, uh, your, get this open, get it to, to see this, follow your wire, and then know which one is cylinder number one. Then you're gonna crank your engine clockwise. Make sure your engine's cold. You don't wanna do this hot. Uh, click, uh, crank it clockwise until you get to cylinder one, TDC. Now on this motor, uh, this pulley, I don't have a TDC mark. I have a BDC, but uh, the MP logo on this uh, pulley is our TDC mark. So TDC stands for top dead center. So we wanna make sure we're right on point now the notch back here on the back of the engine is our marker which tells us where we're at where we're supposed to be so from here to here this is tdc so we are set on point next is to go down below and go to your valve cover you want to take one valve cover at a time uh off because they drip a little bit of oil so you don't want to make a huge mess in your driveway or me on my dirt <laughs> And then what you're gonna do is take that valve cover off, get a rag, make sure it's covered so it catches the oil that drips. And then we're gonna show you what to do next. So my valve covers are bolt on. They're not clamp on like traditional valve covers. So we have to remove these two bolts and then take them off. And then I'll show you guys the valves from there. So now that we taken the valve cover off, cleaned off some of the oil, you come close here. You'll notice here's the intake and exhaust valve uh, for my motor, we use six uh, thousandths of an inch uh, for our measurement here. So 0 0.006 is the measurement that we use for this uh, clearing. Uh, as per my engine builder, this is what the specs that he used for his uh, valve clearance. So what we're gonna do is do a quick test. Get you guys set up here on my tripod. Now what I'm gonna do is gonna feel for the intake and exhaust valves to make sure they are either in spec or not. So right now, I'm gonna push back on these guys. So intake is really stiff. I think exhaust is about the same too. Yeah, I can't even get them in there. Oh, here we go. Yep. Now it's loose. There we go. <laughs> Same with this one. Pretty loose, as you get to see, see that. I shouldn't be able to slide them too easily. You gotta be to get them in there, and they should snag just a tiny bit. You should have a little bit of resistance, not too much. Um, and you'll see here, they just go in no problem, and they have no resistance at all. I mean, they're in there loosey-goosey. So it's been a while since I've done my valve adjustment. So good thing I came with the proper tools to do it. Okay, so next 
we're gonna do our adjustment here so we're gonna break loose our valves here get yourself a good flathead screwdriver okay these are 13 millimeter bolts so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your screwdriver like this make sure this is in here just like that this is the part that really sucks so you can get your flathead here you're gonna get your feeler gauge and you're gonna turn the inner bolt and what you're doing is feeling for it so see right here I got a little bit of resistance too much no resistance at all too much you see I can't it's not even sliding so right there is about where we want to be And what you're gonna need to do and focus on this, don't allow the uh, the bolt to turn besides the nut. Because if not, you're gonna mess up. And you'll see here, we got a little bit of resistance and a little bit uh, smooth play. So that's what we're looking for in adjusting your valves. Over here, no resistance at all sloppy no bueno so same procedure grab that feel for that and then too much resistance so you don't want it to not be able to like move you want it to be able to slide a little bit like that that's where we're what we're looking for is a good slide but with some friction. Oh. And while you're there, and then feel for it, if it's good, give it another snug yank on it. Same over here. Feel for it, that's good. Same thing over here. So, what you're looking for is very, very little resistance, but you want some resistance. Um, for it, it feels like it's snagging a little bit. Um, yeah, like this one, I mean, I could adjust this a little bit more, but it's still pretty decent. This one is perfect. It slides in nicely, but it's got a good snag to it. So this might tick. This might be a ticker. Um, it might not. If you're uncomfortable, just redo it. You know, it doesn't hurt to redo something. You know? Go back in there. Like right there, ooh, that's a good one. No, nope. made it a little loosey-goosey. there there we go now it feels like the other one now yeah good little snag in there not too much but just enough okay now double check it one more time all good uh, one thing I recommend is double check your torque specs on these guys as well while you're at it. Sometimes these like to get loose. Double check these. Very good uh, thing to check. Uh, on top of that, you can check your head studs. These guys right here. 
You should have a couple studs sticking out right here. Also recommend it uh, to check uh, your torque spec on these while you're at it. Um, I did mine a couple of months ago, so I'm good. Uh, so, but I, again, I needed to do um, my valve covers, uh, my valve cover um, gaskets, and uh, obviously a new oil change as well. But that's the procedure. Next is to rotate the engine counterclockwise um, per, how can I say this, uh, per cycle. So what you want to do is make sure that you cycle it to one uh, cycle. And I'll show you guys what I mean when I get there. So now that we finished cylinder number one, we have to go backwards in the whole procedure. So what you guys need to do is legitimately just crank the engine backwards. So we're going to go back one turn, all the way till you get to the BDC of the next cylinder. Too much. Now, a good way of knowing if you're right on point is that it's super easy to move the engine uh, left and right. That's how we know we got to that point where you're on the proper uh, before dead center um, point. Now we're on cylinder number two on this side, on the right side of the engine. So setting it and going backwards lets you do cylinder number one, then number two, and then you're gonna go back over here and do repeat the procedure. The next one, when you keep going backwards, is gonna go to cylinder number three, and then number four. Okay, repeat that entire process until you finish all four uh, cylinders, and then we'll show you guys what to do next. Before I forget, um, one thing you really, really want to pay attention to, you'll see, you can hear the that click. That's how you know the valves are uh, uh, fully open and not closed. That means there's no tension whatsoever on the uh, intake and exhaust valve. Um, to confirm it, push back on this right here. This right here. This pushes the push rod down as far as it can go. You want to make sure this is pushed all the way down to confirm your exact measurement here. Because what can happen is that this push rod can be pushed up a little bit and you put your feeler gauge and it's really tight or it doesn't seem right and you're going to give yourself a wrong uh, measurement. So make sure push down right here on the push rods right here on the bottom and then use your feeler gauge to feel for your measurement like this one's super snug this one I would actually leave it alone this is actually the way I like them this one is on the little loosey-goosey side so I gotta tighten this one again easy procedure follow these steps work on the next side when you're done all right so now that we got cylinder one two three and four Fully adjusted valves. We put the valve new cover. You have to put new valve cover gaskets. So prepare, get yourself prepared. Uh, you're gonna need a 12, a 13, a flathead screwdriver, a crescent wrench to get that guy down here to crank it. Or if you got a good enough, uh, if the belt's tight enough, you'll be able to crank it from over here from the alternator pulley as well. And then pretty much just crank the engine over. Remember, we're gonna start on cylinder number one on TDC, and then you work your way backwards. Okay, so if you go one, two, and it goes three, then four. Uh, that way you do it in that order, everything goes beautifully without any hiccups or issues. So that's it. Uh, make sure again, in this video, we're using uh, 0 0.006 thousandths of an inch for our measurements for our feeler gauge. Uh, we use a 12, a 13, and a flyhead screwdriver for the entire job. Oh, and a big old crescent wrench for the entire job. It takes about a half an hour to 40 minutes tops. But make sure you have yourself a brand new um, set of valve cover gaskets as well. Because removing the valve cover gaskets, you cannot reuse them. They will, uh, they will leak pretty much. So just get that in mind. And that's it. Put your valve covers back on. Fire it up. Make sure you don't hear any loud ticking noises. If you do, find them on which side, uh, which side of the engine. And then... Redo your valve uh, valve adjustments, and then you're golden. Um, you will get minor ticking. That is 
pretty much the nature of these engines. They have very, very little ticking to almost none, uh, depending on the build that you have on your motor. We are using a 1776 fully built um, with a counterweighted crank, uh, big flow heads, on our VW bus. So this is a little bit louder than a normal um, uh, 1600cc motor, but the procedure is exactly the same and it's a little, again, it's a little bit louder. So my ticking's just different than other cars or than other standard engines. That's it though. Thank you for tuning in this episode of Pinchy Al's Garage with Pappy the Bus and our air-cooled motor, uh, how to uh, do your valve, uh, do a valve job on here. See you guys next time. Peace out and have a wonderful day.